fun. You have a really unique story in stand-up comedy. Um, you came to the country, didn't know the language. That was what year two thousand? Oh no, actually, I came to this country in nineteen ninety four. Uh, I kind of. Uh, I knew the language, but uh, my spoken English was really bad, even worse than now. So. But in spite of that, um, I, I think one of the things that, one unique thing that America actually has that we created is stand-up comedy. It's, it's a uniquely American art form. And it seems like a lot of cultures, it's, it's a really alien concept to them. Just a guy standing there telling jokes. And you not only figured out the language, but you also figured out this uniquely American art form. And what's cool is you use that to talk about your immigrant experience in a way that I think a lot of comedy club audiences normally wouldn't hear that experience broken down. Um, I, the joke that you talk about, about the, uh, the test that you have to take to become a citizen, yeah. I think that's one of the best written jokes I've ever heard. Uh, oh, thanks so much. The, the Ben Franklin line and the, the it ends on the, the Roe versus Wade. When did you start thinking, hey, I'm kind of funny? Like, when did that originally happen in your mind? Um, <clears throat> I think it's uh, when I was at Rice, I was attending graduate school there. Um, a friend of mine, I just read this uh, study saying that uh, riding a bicycle may cause impotence. I was like, well, I, almost everybody in China rides a bicycle. And look at the population there. It just doesn't make sense. But then when I said this to my friends and classmates, nobody was laughing, because uh, they don't expect me to tell jokes. You know, so that's the that's one thing that was bothering me, and that's part of the reason that I started doing stand-up comedy. So. You know, a lot of comics, they seem to either want to be cool, or they want to be funny, and you have this nice sort of vulnerability to you. You're not worried about being cool. You're just telling well-crafted, great jokes one after the other. Was it difficult to, I guess, break into the bigger scene for you? Yeah, it was uh, definitely very tough in the beginning because, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't have a very loud voice and uh, I don't have a lot of animation on stage. So it's uh, very hard to get laughs in the beginning. Uh, but fortunately, in Cambridge, there was this uh, club called Lizard Lounge, which doesn't exist anymore. But at the time, there were a lot of uh, very smart comedians there. Uh, I remember one guy, Peter Dodden, he's in LA now. But he writes a lot of uh, smart material. And also in Cambridge, people are kind of used to the Chinese accent, because there's the Harvard, the MIT, there are a lot of uh, Asians there. So they're not really put out by the accent. So. I got a lot of stage time from that club, and other bookers will see me from that club, and they will book me in their clubs as well. When you're in front of an audience, do you like a mixed audience, a bunch of different races, a bunch of different ages, or do you like to be in front of a primarily Chinese audience? Um, I almost doesn't make any difference anymore at this stage, to be honest. Um, like the material I did last night is uh, like 54, 55 minutes. That same set can work in a wide audience as well. So um, when I started out, uh, if I see a crowd, there may, may be, you know, maybe 1% or 2% is Asian. All the rest is either white or blacks. Uh, until 2005, that's the first time I did a show in front of predominantly Asian crowd. And I was so nervous, I had no idea how my material <laughs> would go over. But then they really loved it, and I was doing their uh, event every year since then. Wow. Yeah. So I, I'm, it's really gratifying to be able to tell my uh, experience as an immigrant and have people accepting it. <clears throat> when you got Letterman, or how long did you have to audition to finally get on Letterman? I started in 90, uh, I'm sorry, 2005. That's when Eddie Brill, he's the talent coordinator from the Letterman show. He saw me at an audition. He, afterwards, he said to me, oh, I think you're on your way to the show, but I need more material from you. So I sent him another DVD, and then he emailed me back. I still remember that I was in Netherlands traveling at the time. And he would say, oh, I probably, you have two jokes I kind of liked, but then I want to see more. I just took that as a no, and uh, I never contacted him. And then uh, 
in 2008, he came to Boston. He said, oh, I want to see Joe Wong again. He said it to a booker. So he saw me again. He said, oh, I think you're pretty much ready. So we just started to work on the material and also the order of the jokes. And finally, uh, he put me on wow. uh, April of this year. Wow, very, very impressive. Has anyone ever given you advice that you just feel like when you hear it, you're just like, that's the stupidest thing? I mean, because I, the industry tends to want to put people in a simple box. You know, well, we want you to be the Asian comic. We want you to be the black comic. We want you to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Were you pushed in that direction and you just decided, I don't want to go that route? I got some weird uh, comments from other comedians and bookers, but I never had any bad recommendation from the industry, to be honest. Oh, that's like, good. Yeah. yeah. What's the weirdest thing a comic said to you? Oh, the weirdest thing, this is, might be offensive to uh, to We love it. <laughs> okay. So basically, he said, oh, Jill, it's because, you know, the North Korea is such a hot topic, you should go on stage and say, oh, I hate the North Koreans, and, and do the slanty eye with your fingers. Uh. You're going to get huge laughs. I was like, okay, okay, I'm not going to do it. But the guy actually suggested to me like three or four times. <laughs> he just insisted. He really on it. wanted you. Oh to yeah, do he it. really yeah. convinced that it's gonna make the audience laugh. <laughs> What's the best advice a comic ever gave you? The best advice I would have to, to say is from this guy uh, Tony V. He's a very good comedian in Boston, and uh, he was on Seinfeld before. So one night after seeing my set, uh, he said to me, "Hey, Joe, you need to slow down." You have some material that's kind of uh, funny and intelligent, but people need some time to think and reflect on it. That's probably the single most valuable advice I've ever, I've ever gotten. Wow. To that point. Yeah. Do you think comics tend to speak too quickly? Yes, yeah. Especially when they're on stage and they're nervous, they would talk very fast. But for some people, it works. And if you talk fast and uh, you can enunciate really well, and uh, your material doesn't require that much thinking, that's perfectly fine, but otherwise you probably should slow down a little bit. Yeah, jugglers never have to enunciate. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, how often do you write, and when you do write, is it a process that you finally figured out through trial and error? Um, I guess my question is, is, speak to me a little bit about what your creative process is. Right now, I pretty much write every day. Um, there were there were a couple of days I would just don't have the time to write, and I have to play with my son or something. But I usually write at least five or six lines every day, and uh, and I have no idea if they're funny or not. So I just write it down and I let it sit there for a while, and maybe a week later I will go back there and I scan them and maybe pick the top five to ten jokes I would try that week. And that week I just go out and sometimes it's three shows a night. I would just try them out. Wow. And uh, maybe one will be funny and I would just work on that one. So Tonight you're at the punchline. Yeah. How many new jokes will you try out in your set? Maybe one or two. Just because this is my only my second time playing at the punchline, you know, I don't want to use <laughs> too many new jokes. Yeah. 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 But I, I tried Two new jokes last night. One of them worked okay, so we'll try. I'll probably try one more tonight. It's always a high when you get that new joke, isn't it? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that just yeah, keep you awake at night and stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe, what's your website? Uh, JoeWongComedy.com. JoeWongComedy.com. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for for coming on in and letting us talk to you. Oh, um, thanks so much for having me. Continue success. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you.